when multitasking doesn't work in summary there are generally three combination of tasks that fits comfortably within your attentional space one a few small habitual tasks we are able to breathe while we run pay attention to our heart rate and the enjoy music all at the same time as mentioned earlier initiating these habits require attention and then another attention is boost if we need to in intervene to stay on the track two a task that require most of our focus as well as the habitual task our attentional space is powerful but it's also very limited at best we can do one small habitual task plus one more activity that require most of our attention two examples listening to the podcast or audio book while doing the maintenance task or playing a simple repetitive video game on a phone while listening to the audio book filling the rest of your attentional space with the habitual mindless task is often not the best way to use spare attention so when possible avoid loading it to the brim 3 a complex task your most productive task the one that enable you to accomplish significantly more for every minute you dedicated to them fall into this category the more time and the attention you spend on this task the more productive you become the amount of attentional space consumed by the complex task varies over time while carrying on the discussion with your boss for example your attentional space may shrink and expand rhythmically to match the content of the conversation allowing your mind both to wander and to focus on the conversation when it becomes more complex in a team meeting you could in an instant go from being a passive observer to getting called on for the progress update having some attentional space to spare during the complex task allow you to do two things it leaves a room to reflect on the best approach to completing the task so you can work smarter and avoid autopilot mode you will be able to come up with the idea you might not have had if you were feeling your attention to the brim such as a realization that you could scrap the introduction of the presentation you are going to give and instead dive directly to the point leaving some space also enable you to work with a greater awareness of where you should be directing your attention in the first place that means you can better refocus when your mind inevitably wander from the task at hand at the same time you have attentional space to spare if the task suddenly become even more complex attention overload fitting the right amount and type of task into a atten- attentional space is both an art and investment in productivity the cost of overloading our attention can be pretty several have you ever walked into your kitchen or living room and realize you have forgotten why you went there in the first place you have fallen into the attentional overload trap you tried to cram so many things into your attentional space the tv show that was playing into the background random thoughts and the imd page you are just read and did not have enough space left for your original intention in this case you meant to grab the grocery list your parent left on the dining room table the same things happen when the work problem weigh on your mind as you drive home from the office in this situation your mind may be even more full decoding and processing the talk show on the radio while ruminating on what happened at work that day while running through the multiple habit sequential that let you drive home largely in autopilot mode if you had planned on buying bread on the way chances are you won't have enough space to accommodate even that small simple in- intention you will arrive home feeling overwhelmed and only in the morning you will open the bread drawer and remember the previous day's task we have to work with intention and as much as possible this is especially true when we have more to do than time within which 
to do it intention enable us to prioritize so we don't overload our attentional space doing so also leaves us feeling more calm just as you likely feel uncomfortable after overeating stuffing your attentional space with too many tasks can make you feel unsettled at any one time your attentional space should hold at most two key things that you are processing what you are intend to accomplish and what you are currently doing this is not possible 100% of the time especially as you become immersed in the task but by being mindful of your intention you can be confident that you are immersed in what you are actually aiming to get alone done if you find yourself responding to an important task in autopilot mode chances are you are trying to cram too much into your attentional space by not stepping back to the deliberately manage your attention you allow it to overflow some familiar example taking care of your toddler while shopping trying to walk and text at the same time just this morning i watched someone bump into the mailbox because they were trying to do this rewinding a movie tv show or audio book because someone was talking to you or because you simply zoned out of a while adding baking soda instead of baking powder to a recipe because you were ruminating on something or watching tv leaving a theater with a stomach because you didn't have enough attention left to notice you did eat too much popcorn forgetting to put the divider on the grocery store checkout belt for the next person like the lady in front of me forgot to do this morning as she flipped through the magazine you have probably experienced many similar moment such are impossible to avoid because life often present us with unexpected surprises but many are possible to circumvent and noticing that you are beginning to feel overwhelmed is a great sign that you should check to the assess what occupying your attentional space chances are you are trying to cram too much into at once the best way to avoid this overload is to be more selective with what you are permit into your attentional space on the drive home shut off the radio which will enable you to process the day and also remember your attention to pick up the break at home pause or mute the tv so you don't try to continue processing the show and forgot that you are heading to fetch a note that is in the other room making a small change like this allow you to keep your attention on your intention simplifying our attentional space lets us maintain enough room to work and live intentional throughout the day this lets us spend more time on what's important and meaningful in the moment the state of your attention space determine the state of your life when your attention space is overwhelmed you in turn feel overwhelmed when your attentional space is clear you also feel clear the tighter you keep your attentional space the more clearly you think time for a quick check in what's occupying your attentional space at this point take a stock of everything that's on your mind if you find your attention space is a bit too full simplify what is in it either by writing down these things so you can deal with them later or by refocusing on the book in your hand the cost add up it bears repeating that there is nothing inherently wrong with multitasking it's entirely possible to multitask especially when it comes to the habitual task in our hand and life but it's important to make a distinct between shifting our attention and multitasking multitasking means conquering trying to focus on more than one thing at a time shifting our attention is the movement of our intentional 
attentional spotlight from one task to another shifting attentional throughout the day is necessary if we focus on just one thing all day long no matter how important it was we probably won't have a job still too much shifting can be dangerous especially when we are surrounded by more novels object and distraction than our brain is capable of handling while slipping into autopilot mode is the largest cost of attentional overflow there are other disadvantages as, as well for starters letting you attentional space overflow affects your memory you may have noticed that when you watch a tv or a movie with your phone by your side you recall much less of what you have seen in fact i have noticed that as i have allowed more devices into my life i remember less in general technology speed up time by tempting us in each moment to fill our attentional by the brim this leads us to remember less because it is the only when we pay attention to something that our brain actively encode into the memory when we make our attentional space juggle too many task we fail to notice and remember the details of most important work when we multitask we even process our work with an entirely different part of our brain take study for example as a russell podcar a psychological professor at stanford explained to me when we learn while we multitask we rely more heavily on the basal ganglia the brain system that's involved in the learning of skill and habits however when we encode information in the more focused state we rely more heavily on our brains hippocampus which actually let us store and recall the information what use is our time if not to create memories of conversation meals vacations and other experiences when we fail to focus deeply on any one thing we focus instead only on the highlights of what we are doing and as a consequence later forgot how we spend our time letting our attention overflow make our action less meaningful because we don't remember how we spend our time in the first place this affect our productivity in the long run we make more mistakes because we don't properly encode the lessons we learned and the first time we messed up we also accumulate less knowledge which when we do knowledge work for living sets us back in the long run constantly shifting our attentional spots like to focus on one thing then another and then another not only prevents the formation of memories but also undermines our productivity research shows that more often we fill our attention to the brim the longer it takes to the switch between tasks the less we are able to filter out irrelevant information on the fly the poorer we become at surprising the urge to switch between tasks in the first place as i mentioned back in chapter 0 when we are working in front of computer a device that obviously chock full of the novel thing to focus on on average we work for just 40 second before we are either interrupted or distracted this number become even more concerning when we consider the fact that our phone is by our side and interrupting us as well needless to say our best work happens beyond this 40 second mark nearly every single important task takes more than 40 second to focus attention to do well on the top of obvious productivity toll of the continuously interrupting ourselves we are also not that good at shifting our attention even when our attentional space is relatively clear and focused on just one task there are deep constant associated with the switching quickly to another according to the sophia leary a professor of organizational behavior at the university of washington it's not possible for us to seamlessly switch attention from one task to another leary coined the term attentional residue to describe the 
fragment or the previous task that remain in our attentional space after we shift to another activity it could be that you are sitting in a meeting and your mind keeps going to a project you were working on right before the meeting or something you anticipate do, doing right after the meeting it's having that divided attention where part of your brain is thinking about those other ongoing of project that you have this is what makes it so difficult to devote yourself to what you are supposed to do doing in the present this attentional residue keeps our mind continue to evaluate problem solve reflect and ruminate about previous task long after we have transited to the next switching become easier only once we finish a task especially when time pressure like a deadline motivate us to give task done by contrast leori explained if you work on something and you don't really have to rush but you get it done your brain can keep thinking about what else should i have done or is there another way to do this task or maybe i could have done bet- better even though the task is completed it's hard for you your brain to get closure in general since our brain is no longer motivated to complete this loose deadline task leori found that the mental activation of the goal time pressure narrow our focus on the task restricting us from considering a number of more creative way to complete it we don't question our approach as much because we have not stepped back to consider the alternative this make it easier to switch all this raise a question just how several is the productivity cost of switching switching does make your work more stimulating and its cost may be worth bearing if your work takes only 5% longer and you make only a occasional mistake in practice though the cost is usually much greater one study found that when we continuously switch between the task our work take 50% longer compared with doing one task from start to complete if you are working on a pressure or deadline free project consider taking a break before starting something else so more of what attention residue can dissipate as far as your productivity is considered the best time to take break is after you have finished a big task the quality of your attention intention is the bouncer of your attentional space let's let's in the productive object of the attention and keep the distraction out few things will benefit your overall quality of life more than focusing with intention it isn't possible to work and live with intention 100% of the time demand gets in the way our focus shifts and our attention space overflow but we can maintain our intention for enough of the day to accomplish a lot more than we would otherwise this chapter has been largely theoretical in order to put its advice into practice you will need to do several things set intention more often modify your environment to be less distracting overcome the mental resistance you have to certain task eliminate distraction before they derail you and clear the distraction inside your own head the subsequent chapter covers each of these idea in turn but understanding the principle behind them is essential there are numerous way to measure the quality of your attention but i have developed three major to track my own progress you can use this yardstick to measure your progress as you can adopt the tactics in this book into your life one how much of your time you spend intentionally two how long you can hold your focus in one sitting three how long your mind wander before you catch it